I'm talking to Tom Hoving, author and former director of the Metropolitan Museum. His latest book is called False Impressions, The Hunt for Big Time Art Fakes. Tom, what advice can you give to the layman as to how best to detect a forgery? By living artists. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> Other than that, if you're buying art for the worst reason, which is for investment, Confederate bonds are less risky than buying works of art for investment, all right? And if you're buying it to make a buck in the future, then the chances are that you're an easier mark for the scam people to set you up. But if you really buy it because you adore it, cannot live without it, and approach a work of art that way, if it's no good, you're going to see the flaws. You're going to see the inevitable mistake that the forger left in it. Um, you have been a fake buster for a long part of your career, from the beginning practically. But you have also been taken in. Uh, tell me about the experience that you had when you were purchasing art for the Cloisters and you bought a Madonna and Child that turned out to go a bit wrong. Well, I saw this lovely thing. She's a virgin and child, uh, wood painted on a pedestal, wood painted, held up by three gorgeous angels who turn their heads back and adore the, the virgin and child. German, late Gothic, and I fell in love immediately with it, and I got it. It couldn't be, right? Because it was too sweet, and it was, uh, it was a made-up fake, right? It was something to s s make saccharin, kind of the tough primitive nature of German Gothic sculpture, which is not sellable. Huh? I so I got cool. stung in that case, and many, I got stung in my private collecting too, but uh, that's worse. How do you defend yourself against that now? What have you learned? Yeah. To buy a fake teaches you tremendous things about collecting, and it humbles you. This is, this is important, right? Humility is not a word I would think of when I think of Tom Hovind. Oh, many times, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, a lot of dark nights of the soul. Really? Oh, yeah, sure. You just don't show anybody, you know. How has the art world, the curators, the experts, how have they responded to your book? Well, a couple of them said it's the finest book on the subject they've ever uh, looked at. And uh, those are the real curators. I don't know. That's about all. You were one of the early skeptics with the Gettys Kuros, a uh, statue of a young boy that was theoretically 6th century BC from Greece. Uh, what was wrong with the Kuros? I saw it just after it was being lifted out of the box it had been in for a long period of time and uh, was being set up in the studio out there at Gettys Old House in Malibu was the conservation studio. I was with an associate curator and I walked in and from across the room I said, have you paid for that? The guy said, well, are you joking? I said, no, if you haven't paid, don't. If you're paying on time, stop. It can't be old. And it looked like it had been dipped in a huge vat of cafe regular coffee, not cafe au lait, which would have uh, elevated it, but regular coffee, you know, lots of cream, hit the cream. And it just looked really weird and there were various styles in the thing that, uh, you know, and there was even a big hunk of of, of damage which had been in the original marble and in those days you didn't make a beautiful boy right and set him up to placate the gods and have a mar in the marble you just 